Currently, all it has taken to watch this video has been to move just your finger. However, right at that moment, the computers in the entire world began to work for you. Data travelled thousands of kilometres and this screen appeared in less than a second. Therefore, what truly occurs when you click the internet? In this video, I will describe how the internet functions from step one, in a way that won't bore you. What is the internet? There is one thing that most people do not understand. They imagine the internet as a kind of cloud, but as Preston Graller explains, The internet consists of millions of computers interconnected with one another. Therefore, the internet is not a location, not a single system, not a centrally controlled structure. The internet is a large network of computers communicating with each other. So what happens first when you click? When you type a web address or click a link, the first question is, which computer does this address belong to? That's where DNS comes in. Think of DNS like this, the Internet's phone book. You type YouTube, but computers don't understand words. They communicate using IP addresses. DNS translates names into numbers. IP addresses, the Internet's address system. Every device connected to the Internet has an IP address. This address is the device's identity on the Internet. Preston Graller explains it simply. An IP address is your home address on the Internet. If data is going to reach you, the system needs to know who is it going to, which path should it take, what's the fastest route. All of this is determined using IP addresses. How does data travel? The packerarily. Nothing on the internet is sent as a single piece. A video, a photo or a message is broken into thousands of tiny packets. These packets take different routes, pass through different servers, arrive at different speeds. But in the end, they are all reassembled on your device. Routers and path selection. Those packets don't travel alone. At every stop, a decision is made. Which path should this packet take next? The devices that make these decisions are called routers. Routers. Analyse traffic. Choose the fastest and least crowded path. Change routes when necessary. The internet behaves like a living system, constantly searching for the most efficient route. HTTP and HTTPS, how browsers talk to servers. When your browser opens a website, it's actually saying, send me the contents of this page. The language used for this request is the HTTP protocol. If the address starts with HTTPS colon, the data is encrypted. Anyone in between can't read it. That's why banks, social media platforms and private services use HTTPS. Servers, the backbone of the Internet. Websites don't live on your computer. They are stored on servers. A server is a powerful computer that runs 24-7 capable of responding to thousands of users at the same time. YouTube, Google, Netflix, they all rely on massive server farms. Why is the internet sometimes slow? When you're gaming, watching a movie or downloading something, you've probably asked, why is my internet so slow? So what's the real reason? Preston Graller is very clear about this. Most of the time, the internet isn't slow. Our connection is. Common reasons include heavy traffic, distant servers, weak routers, poor connection points. Most of the time, the internet is far faster than you think. Who controls the internet? 
Short answer, no one does. Everyone does. The internet has no central authority. Runs on shared protocols. Works because everyone follows the same rules. That's why the internet is resilient, hard to shut down, constantly growing. So in short, when you click a link, DNS translates the name, data is split into packets, routers make decisions, servers respond. All of it happens in less than a second, and you simply say, I clicked. The Internet is one of the most complex yet most invisible systems humanity has ever built. If you enjoyed this video and want more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next video.